Okay, okay, everyone. Just uh, hang in with me. I have to talk about this topic because it drives me crazy when I watch other tutorials. <music> Hey everybody, welcome to Not From This World's Daz Studio Tutorial Series. I want to thank you for joining me. And today I kind of have a pet peeve because I've got to address ghost lights. And the reason why I decided to make this video is because there are so many videos out there about Daz Studio ghost lights. You'd think it'd be pretty easy to set them up. But, oh my gosh, talk about skipping steps and not explaining very well. That's what I have discovered. So I'm going to try and talk about this topic as direct and straightforward as I can and make this as easy as possible. Okay, so as you can see, I have a scene set up. It's kind of a sci-fi scene where Milica here is attacking a robot scorpion pretty cool and she is rescuing her friend Juniper who is restrained and about to be attacked by this scorpion now when I set this up I really like it I have some spotlights actually you can see I have quite a bit of spotlights and I have various cameras set up so that I can use render queue to make a series of pictures of this scene. So I kind of have a um, picture inside this observation room where these people are looking out at the battle. I have some lower shots of Juniper and this is where the ghost lights are going to come in. So I really like these close-ups of Juniper trying to fight the scorpion as she's restrained. But if I do a eye ray preview, you're going to see that all of my spotlights that set up the scene are not shining directly on Juniper. The scorpion is blocking some of the light coming into her. So as you can see uh, in this eye ray, her face is just a little too dark. So what I want to do is I want to add a ghost light under the scorpion to just kind of light up things so that when I render this picture, it's going to have a little more light on her face. And so let's go back to the texture mode and you'll hear my computer kick off here. If I do a simple uh, ghost light, I'm going to be able to fix this problem. In order to make a ghost light, it's actually very simple and you know, honestly, I'm not trying to dog on any of the other tutorials. I just don't understand why they skip steps. So let's kind of take this step by step and make a ghost light so that we can get it into our scene and get a good render. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select a primitive and we can select any of the primitives. Uh, most of the time we're going to select a plane for a ghost light or a sphere. I'm going to select a sphere in this case. Size doesn't matter. It's going to be huge anyway, and we're going to click on the sphere, and we're just going to shrink it down to a manageable size. And then I'm going to kind of move it into a general area that I think is going to help my scene. So I'm going to put it right about here. Now, the advantage of a ghost light is we can illuminate this sphere and then make it invisible. So it can be right by our character, but you're not going to see the light once we have it as a ghost light. That's why it's called a ghost light. So we're going to have this invisible object illuminating the scene. So this approximately looks good. I can move it once I have the light set up to its proper place so that we can get it where we want it. Now the first step in creating this ghost light is going to um, involve our surface tab. So with the sphere selected, I'm going to go to my surface tab. And under my surface tab, I'm going to select the sphere. 
Now, once I select the sphere, I'm gonna come up to my DAS Studio formats. I'm gonna find my DAS Studio library. And from my DAS Studio library, I'm gonna come down to shader presets. I'm gonna select shader presets. And then I'm gonna come down to iRay, select iRay, go to DAS Uber, select Uber. And then I'm gonna scroll, in this case I'm scrolling up, you may have to scroll down, but I'm gonna scroll until I find the emissive layer. We've done this before when I had Milica looking at a computer and we wanted the computer screen to glow and it um, wasn't glowing, so we added this emissive. So with my surface tab, the sphere selected under surfaces, I'm going to double click on the emissive. Um, in a particular tutorial I was checking out, this was just dismissed and not told to anyone and it made it very confusing, at least to me. So we need to have this selected in our surfaces. Now once we have that in our surfaces, the next step is to stay in my DAS Studio library but we're gonna go up to scripts from our shader presets, go to scripts, select scripts, go to utilities, click on the utilities, and then we're gonna find this script called create advanced IRA node properties. And with our sphere selected, we're just gonna double click on that. All right, now once this create advanced IRA node properties has been selected, we are going to go to the parameters tab and in the parameters tab under display with the sphere, we're going to click on enable IRA mat. So I'm just gonna click that on. I can come over to a mission, click on it, and I'm gonna have this menu. Now in the menu, there's a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, we have to change the luminance units to the KCD over M squared. Once we have that selected, then we can play with the luminance. And I am gonna drop my luminance from 5,000 down to 500 because I don't want my ghost light really bright. I just want to illuminate Juniper's face because she's under that scorpion and the spotlights, of course, are getting blocked. I'm also gonna take my emission temperature and I'm gonna make it 5,000. It is defaulted at 2,900, but I want to make it 5,000 because I just want some white light. If you keep it lower, just like your spotlights, you're gonna get kind of a yellow light. You can also change your emission color. So if you want blues or purples or reds, you can change that emission color and your ghost light will change color for you. Now, once I have this set up, I'm gonna stay in the surface menu and I'm gonna go to base. And with base, I am going to scroll down until I hit these two dials called uh, refraction index and refraction weight. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this refraction index and I'm gonna drop it down as low as it can go to the left. So it'll be at one. And then if I take this refraction weight, if I raise it up to the highest number, you can see that my sphere disappears. Now let me show you that I have this set up, let's do an eye ray render and you're gonna see light shining onto Juniper's face, hopefully. So let's see if this worked before we make the refraction weight one and make our sphere invisible. Remember a ghost light is invisible so we're gonna use this refraction weight to make this sphere transparent and that is going to make it invisible in our scene. Let's see though before we make it invisible if we get some light. Oh yes, so you can already see that Juniper's head is more illuminated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my ghost light around before I change the refraction weight. 
Let's move it around and get it into a position that we like and then we'll make it invisible and render up some pictures. To move it around, all I've got to do is go back to the parameters tab with my sphere selected and see I can move this. So I'm gonna raise it up just a hair. Let's raise it to about 35. I can split my screen and go into eye ray mode in both screens just to see how each camera is illuminating Juniper's face. So you can see I really like this. I might just move the sphere back just a little bit. Let's see how that changes the lighting. Okay, so I I like that. I think that looks pretty good. Let's get out of the double screen and let's get out of iRay mode. Go back to texture. It looks like I have a few issues I need to address before I render this up. Okay, so I like where this is at and I'm going to click back on my sphere. So I've kind of checked out and edited my scene a little bit. Now I'm going to go to my surface tab. We're going to go back to base and remember I'm going to take this refraction weight and I'm going to move it to one. Now that completely makes my ghost light invisible. And now all I have to do is get my cameras ready and let's start rendering. To render, remember in render queue, I'm going to go to window panes, drop down to render queue. I already have some things set up. I'm going to add this current scene. I'm going to hit all visible cameras and then we're going to hit OK and I'm going to hit render and let's get rendering. All right, everyone. So I got my renders completed and I'm pretty happy with the result. You can see that Juniper's face is fairly illuminated now and here are my series of pictures so nice view of her face we can see it even under this scorpion there's Milica trying to fight off the mechanical scorpion so here I really like how the ghost light is illuminating Juniper's face perfect I have a little bit of an issue here with the uh, hair I'm gonna have to do a little post work to add her hair she's got her head turned just a little bit too much but we'll get that fixed but you get the idea so I hope this helped you don't forget to like subscribe and give me a comment I'd love to hear what you have to think about my tutorials and what you want to see in the future. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.